this fourth video in this web scraping series and we're finally going to look at making a bootstrap table which looks a little bit more pretty than just sort of isolated bits of data on a website and how to get multiple bits of data say across a table um, and display it using Flask on your website. So we're going to do this in this video in four easy steps. If you feel very confident or you're an advanced user, you could just pause the screen as I show the different bits of code now. Um, but if you would like to listen to me do it step by step and explain it, please continue watching. So the four steps are here. There's actually five steps. I've started with the zero, a bit like a, a Python array index. So we find this time a website that we're going to scrape. And this time I thought it'd be interesting to use a Wikipedia, which is a great database, a great place to scrape from. Um, of the largest internet companies. And you can be thinking in your mind which you think the largest internet company is. And we're going to you know, get information like the revenue, etc., the rank. We're going to find the HTML tags. We're going to use a for loop now to actually not just get the first company, but all of them, as many as we like, and put them into a bootstrap table. So yet again, all we're doing is we are updating our site um, by updating the webscraper.py file. So there's a couple of things here we need to do. So you can see you'll be adding the same old information, but here you'll be putting some information into a table, the table which we've um, been extracting from, from Wikipedia. And of course, then you just pass that data through again. Um, so that's slightly different now using Flask and Jinja on the home.html page you'll be passing using a for loop in the ginger here, so for element in data, and using the three elements uh, that we want to get, which are going to be the rank, the company name, and the revenue. So let's have a look and do this step by step right from scratch. So what we're trying to achieve is something like this. We'd like to find a site, which is going to be Wikipedia, which dynamically shows us uh, the, the top hundreds of companies, the top internet companies in the world with their rank and their name and their revenue. Now, this is the link that I've come up with. It's a list of the internet largest companies, as you can see. Um, here's the list. Here's the URL, which you need to take note of if you are going to scrape it. And no surprise, Amazon's at the top there. Um, actually, I thought Google would be at the top, but it isn't. And like I said, what we're going to do is just scrape the company name the rank, which will dynamically change. So it would change on our on our scraped site as well and the revenue as well. So we can see these are the uh, revenue. This is the, the column. Now, any table and you will be working with scraping data with tables. Probably a lot is made up of columns and rows. And of course, it's probably called a table and it's going to be consistent because you can see that the company name is a link that is going to be consistent. So it's not going to be too difficult to analyze this and figure out what we need. So let's have a look. Now, if you click um, in right click on the, the actual table, you hover over the you can hover over this bit as well until you see that the whole table has been highlighted. So you can see here it has been highlighted. That suggests to us that we have the data that we want. Now we're going to extract the whole data, all of it, all of the, the table entries, and then maybe narrow it down to maybe 10 or 5. So, so far we've got this and we can see that this bit here appears to be the table class. Let's, let's have a look. Okay. So that little tag there, that ID, which says wiki table sortable MW collapsible, nice long name here. And we can check to see this is really what we want because if we click on edit HTML, so here we've expanded the inspect element there. If you click on edit HTML on this bit here, you can actually go into that tag a bit more deeply. And sorry, this is this is where we see that. And you can see that you have the rank. This is the wrong sort of yeah, this is this is where it is. You can see that the, the company, the rank, um, the revenue, everything that we're looking for is here within this bit here. So really the only information that we need, I've decided for now anyway, is to know that this is a table. It has columns in it. When you see TR, that's probably referring to the rows and, it, and, and also this bit of information over here. So we're going to have to copy that or memorize that and use that 
when we code. So that's great. Let's start. Let's go back to Sublime Text and start coding this. So we've analyzed our website, which happened to be this one. So I've taken the liberty of actually just adding it in there. So that's the website name. We've done the usual things. We have requests. We're getting the URL. We've set up a beautiful soup object, BS object. Um, the same thing, HTML parser. And now we're ready to actually start extracting our data and web scraping. So let's begin by setting up something, a little variable called data use our beautiful soup object as, as always and this time we're going to find and remember we have a table we have a class and we remember that it was called uh well wicked wicked table i think wicked table sortable mw collapsible that was the name of the the um sort of tag that we we decided we we need to extract everything that we want on the page so have a look this is how i'm going to write it and this is the syntax you're going to use so we first say that it's going to be a table comma uh, we're going to have these curly speech marks in which i'm going to have the class oops and you make sure you spell it right however um, command prompt will pick it up when you're running your server if you've made a mistake of course then we put in the actual name you might have to cut and paste it if you're going to get it wrong as it won't work but collapsible something like that and then of course we close those brackets and that should be that now of course, this is not just, it was like the previous um, video that we had, we just had one bit of information, a bit more simple. We weren't working with multiple bits of data, so it was easier, it wasn't as complex. At this point, what we're going to have to do is work with a table. So I'm going to set up a list. So let's call it table data and set up a list um, in Python, which you do so by using these square brackets. And this is an empty list that I've set up. And then I'm going to first set up the table rows. So let's call it TRS, table rows. And I'm going to say the use the beautiful soup object, of course. And I'm going to select the table TR, which is going to be referring to the rows in the table. Now I'm going to use a for loop. Now again, if you're not familiar with for loops, uh, you might want to brush up on your Python knowledge, but it is quite intuitive. So I'm going to say for each row in TRS, right? And here you can define how many you want to pull. So if I want 10 or 20 or 100 or whatever, let's just say like one to say five, let's say one colon six there, which is going to give us um, something. Now remember the first element in this is empty because it's going to be the column headers or the, the row headers rather. So we'll see how that works in a minute. So you indent inside the row. Remember in Python indentation is really important and you say row is equal to empty row there. And then you set up and you say for T in TR, and we're selecting it again, this time in the column, we are going to get just the first three elements. Now remember what we're trying to do here, this is a bit of string manipulation sort of syntax there, is that we don't want every single uh, bit of data in that column, we don't want the uh, where what was it that like the headquarters and the amount of profit that they're making we just wanted those first three things so it's going to be from there to three and then we extend the row by having using our strip method again right and of course then just outside the for loop there we're going to append the row that we've just extracted here to the table data. Okay. Now outside both the for loops over here, I'm going to say data is equal to table data. And we can check to see what's happening if it's made any, ha has any errors here in a minute. I'm going to smooth that up, hoping you can see all of it. Now in the roots, let's move this to the right. In the roots, of course, we're passing the data. Oops. And you do so by just saying data is equal to data. And in our home page, we don't want that. We want something pertaining to the data. So I'll deal with that in a minute after I've just checked to see that this actually doesn't have any errors in it. So I'm going to go save all. 
Um, let's just run the server. Looks good, but of course it's not going to be doing anything. So if I actually go back to my site, you'll see that it's just empty and doesn't have much on it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the HTML page. We're going to um, put on it a beautiful table and actually extract the little bits of data that we, we want and put it in the table, which will display on the site. Now we're nearly there. And what we need to do, as we said, is find a beautiful table to pretty up this website and see how we can display the data in a table. Now, of course, we are using Bootstrap. So if we go back to Sublime Text, we can see that we used a boot, Bootstrap starter template. This is all, it's got the meta tags, it's got the style sheet. So we could just head over to Bootstrap, get Bootstrap, and a good place to start is documentation or components. And you could search really for, for whatever you're looking for. So say you were looking for table. It will give you loads of examples of tables. So for instance, you can see that is a kind of standard table. Um, and you can customize these, you can change the color, you can make it look more interesting, add additional CSS to make it even more sort of flashy or whatever you want. But I'm just going to use um, something quite straightforward. And actually, I'm going to code this for you. Um, just actually type it out so you understand what each thing is. So here you can see this is a table. Um, TH is really referring to the, the columns, I think table header, and the RTR is the rows. So that's how it's structured. So let's go back to sublime text. Now, all of this, I'm going to put this, just make it slightly centered. <clears throat> And of course, this is I'm not focusing on the, the design of the site. You can focus on making it as beautiful as you like at some point. Um, top, so we say five companies. So we've changed that to top five companies. And we could obviously change the um, heading here to something like top internet companies, something like that. Right, so here, somewhere here, we would like to place our table. So let's start coding our table. Um, you type in table class. It's useful for you to know how a table is constructed as well, if you were typing it from scratch. Um, T head. And remember, everything is sort of, if it opens, you have a closing tag as well. Right, and you have table rows there. That would end there. Everything is embedded. And then finally, inside that, you have the table uh, like columns. So let's set up, set up just in this exact way that Bootstrap would do so. The first one would be like an ID number kind of thing. Let's have that there. So we can paste these in. So how many columns do we need? If that was an ID. And let's give these names. So that would be the, I think it was rank, wasn't it? That's going to be the name and that's going to be the comp the revenue of the company. And then finally, we've entered our rows over there. We've got our T head, which is ended there. And finally, our body should be ended somewhere here. I might have deleted it which is bad. So let's end our body. <laughs> and of course, our table itself. So let's see what this is looking like. If I save that and I check that my server is running and I go back, I can see that it's certainly set up a table. There's nothing inside it but it's set up a table with rank, name, and revenue. And it's not looking terribly pretty, but it's it's great. This You, you can see the potential for this, um, how you can do whatever you wanted as you saw fit. So we go back to this now. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the information from here. Remember, this is all the information from the table that we've extracted, which happens to be um, the one, two, three in terms of the columns headings. So the TDs, we're, we're getting just the rank the name and the revenue and also the first five 
uh, rows of information. So how do we actually display this on the screen? Well, we're going to use Jinja. So where it says, this is where we're trying to do it, right? And we're trying to replicate this row. In other words, we need some sort of loop. You always use a loop. Whenever you think in your head that you need to repeat something again and again and again, you're going to use a loop. And more likely than not, you're going to use a for loop. So just above the road here, beneath the table head, I'm going to use some ginger, which remember is always contained in these curly brackets. Um, do go back and watch the Flask beginner series if any of this is completely confounding to you. But again, you should be able to follow on. You use two little percentage signs and in between it, we're going to have a for loop which says for element in data. Quite straightforward. At the end, we end the for loop and we say end for. And of course, inside here, we can then decide what information we want inside um, each of these in uh, rows, which is going to be repeated again and again. So again, we just use in the same way we've been doing before, but this time we choose the actual elements. So in the first case, we want zero, element zero. Um, then we want element one. Don't forget the curly braces. And I'm going to copy and paste that and that's going to be the, the last one which is element two so we set this up and let's have a look so we go save all check that our server is running go back and unbelievably has a little curly brace there which i could get rid of but you can see that it's working in principle it is scraping that website it is storing that information on data it's splitting it up it's beautifying it it's making sure there's no tags in it and it's also displaying it on a table in the front end like this so hopefully you can see the scope of what you can do with web scraping um, working with integers you can do clever calculations or you can also just scrape and uh, put something in a table that displays it in the way that you want you want to customize it or personalize it but also remember that scraping um, it is a matter of protocol, legalities. You might want to check with the site that you're scraping. Uh, many sites have a robots.txt file, which you can find by posting after the, the URL. And often that will give you information about whether you can scrape or their scraping policy. Uh, most sites won't obviously mind you doing something like this. Um, and many sites provide APIs for the sort of information they think you want to scrape. So worth keeping in mind, worth looking into and uh, I hope you found this useful. Please do subscribe and like. Thanks very much.